Welcome to the 2020 NAMM show. Today I'm here at, in Anaheim, California at the Lounge 88, which is the large room here at the NAMM show that is almost entirely dedicated to pianos. There are a few manufacturers that like to be on another level, on level two, but the Lounge 88, for all the years I've come to the NAMM show, has been up here on level three, and the vast majority of piano makers are within this room. So today I thought I would take you guys on a walk around on a tour of the Lounge 88 of the piano room and show you guys all of the wonderful, cool, unusual, rare, and odd piano makers that come here to the show. One thing that is going to be a little bit different, though, is because we're using some um, new camera equipment, my cameraman is not going to have a free hand, so I'm going to be carrying around some of my equipment. So that would include my camera bag and also this Fazioli bag, because, of course, I went and visited Fazioli and they were awesome to me and gave me a little bag of goodies. So let's go into the Lounge 88. Go check some, some stuff out. Hopefully you guys don't mind me bringing this along, but I can't really leave it because something could happen to it. So let's come on in and check out what we've got. Now, of course, I was just mentioning Fazioli, and that is one of the first things you have here when you walk in the door. There's two entrances to the Lounge 88. The other one is right by the new Baldwin company, which I think Fazioli is a little bit more exciting to start the video off with. So let's just take a brief look here and check out Fazioli. This is the Fazioli booth. It's looked just about the same every year that I have come here to the NAMM show. You have got this bright red carpet and three wonderful pianos. You can only see two of them because they actually put the concert grand in a wonderfully soundproofed room at the back of the booth. And it's very, very nice to be able to go in there, take a break from all the noise of NAMM, and really be able to analyze the sound of the piano. Last year at NAMM, I did a video in that room where I played Pirates of the Caribbean on that piano. This year, I think I'm not going to film in that Fazioli room. Um, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I'm not sure. It just depends how much time I have. But this is the Fazioli booth. Wonderful pianos, wonderful people, and it's absolutely fantastic to come here and play their pianos. Let's, let's take a look around this way, around the NAMM convention. Over here in this corner, we have Perzina Pianos. Perzina is actually a Chinese manufacturer of pianos, but honestly, the quality of the pianos isn't bad, and they do have very beautiful art cases here. You can see this Perzina has this really fancy wood. A lot of their pianos use African woods that are really, really gorgeous to look at, and their pianos don't sound half bad either. We also have another art case Perzina over here, and then we have a s normal black Perzina over here at this area of the um, booth. There's also a white Perzina over here too, which I've always found white pianos look a little bit odd to me, but I don't know. It looks pretty nice with the Perzina name on it. Now down here we have something that's really cute, and I've never actually seen it before at the NAMM show. Uh, the name of these instruments, I'm not even sure what these are called, but they're, they're small toy digital pianos. So they're absolutely little tiny instruments. I want to do a video with one of these, but I'm not sure I'll be able to have the time for it today. But they're little tiny baby digital pianos that have a number of different sounds on them. There's On this one, there's four different sounds, including a, a kind of like a tone wheel, Hammond organ, and a church organ. So obviously these are designed for children. They aren't really serious instruments, but they're still super, super cute, and I like the idea. Let's continue walking along down this way over here. We have more instruments that and things that are designed for children. This one isn't particularly exciting, but we do have this thing called the One Future of Musical uh, Education, some kind of an app that connects to these uh, digital pianos that I've never even actually tried to play before. Pretty average um, digital piano there, but this is just another one of the things that you will find here at the NAMM show. One of my favorite things here at the NAMM show would be the C. Beckstein booth. C. Beckstein is a wonderful German manufacturer, and they have four different lines of pianos. Their Beckstein Concert Series is their highest quality pianos, handcrafted in Germany. Then they have the Academy Series, which are manufactured in Germany. They have the Hoffmann line, which this piano is from here. Those are actually made in the Czech Republic. Then they have the low-end Zimmermann line, which is designed by C. Beckstein. Hoffman up, uh, uprights are actually pretty decent. I did a video on one several, uh, I think a couple years ago, and I actually found it to be quite respectable for the price point of the instrument. It's a bit hard to hear at the NAMM show. It sounds a little bit muffled, but it does have a nice pure tone, and the action of it feels very well regulated. 
Over here is a Hoffman Grand. I believe I have played a, on this one a little bit at the NAM show. Has a bit of a brighter sound than you would find on a C. Beckstein, but honestly, again, the action seems to be very well regulated, and it would make a very good, um, you know, advanced intermediate piano. This here is one of my favorite instruments at the entire NAM show. This, of course, is the C. Beckstein A192 from the concert line. Fantastic action, beautiful sound. I have a review coming out here of the piano, maybe uploaded before this video or after. I'm not really sure what my upload schedule is going to be. But I absolutely love this piano. It has a really wonderful sound, and it's absolutely fantastic to play. There's a couple of things over here that I missed that I haven't actually checked out yet. There's some kind of a bender for benches over there on the left. It looks pretty nice. And then over here we have something called Grand Feel. I haven't actually had the chance to check it out yet, but it looks like it uses composite components, and their sign says that their repetition systems make common upright pianos into special ones with a grand piano and playability. I, I have not spent any time yet to come and check it out. There was a guy earlier playing some nice jazz music on it, so I do think it is capable of playing some some advanced music. Perhaps sometime later at the show I'll come back and check this out. The name is very reminiscent to me of Kawhi's grand feel action, so perhaps they drew some inspiration from that. I do see that the they are using uh, composite components here. I'm not sure. This is a Kawhi. Uh, perhaps that's what it originally came with. Um, but I'll, I'll come back later and check this out and see what this is all about. There's other kind of unusual things here. This booth is completely empty. It's for the National Piano Travelers Association. No clue what that is, but it's here at the NAMM show. Here we have the Piano Technicians Guild. They come here, I think, most every year for the NAMM show. You can actually buy this cool um, three-key Renner action demo here at the show, which is really cool. I always love action demos, little bits and pieces, slices of pianos. I've done a video of this too as well, which is really, really unique. At first glance, it looks like your typical piano, but in fact, the keys are actually a little bit narrower than your usual piano, which makes it easier to play wider octaves for people who have smaller hands. So it's a kind of an interesting thing, and I will have a video of this as well. This is at the uh, Vienna... Uh, what is the name of this booth? Uh, I guess it's Vienna International, uh, but they they have a number of different manufacturers like Hyloon and Petroff and a number of other various stencil brands. Hyloons are actually pretty well respected in the industry. Petroff is as well, and that piano there was a Hyloon. Over here we have more stencil brands or something. This is a Herod, sir. Uh, the people at this booth, I do have to say, are quite friendly. One of the guys here yesterday was uh, asking me to give me my thoughts on the piano. I won't have a review of this one, but it is a Asian-made uh, piano, and um, it's overall pretty average. I did say yesterday... Yeah, I did say yesterday that the piano was out of tune, and I said that it's always a good idea to keep your pianos in tune as much as possible at the NAMM show. I was hoping it would have been tuned uh, between now and then, but doesn't sound like it has. It just doesn't have a bad action, though. It, it can actually handle playing the third movement of Moonlight Sonata, but I have noticed that these pianos tend not to age very well when I see them used in music stores. Over here we have a, another, what I presume to be a Sensel brand. Hello! This is Ernst Krauss Berlin. Would you be able to tell me a little bit about... Hi! Thank you. Nice to meet you, too. Would you be able to tell me a little bit about these pianos? Because I'm very unfamiliar with the um, this brand. Yeah. Uh, this brand uh, originated from the uh, uh, from Berlin, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, nine, uh, 1868, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, currently, yeah, uh, we uh, uh, some uh, some pianos we produce in China. Mm -hmm. uh, some uh, some pianos we just uh, 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 assemble in uh, uh, in Germany, and then also uh, also ship to uh, to China or other countries according to the request of the customer. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. So that is what the Ernst Krauss Berlin piano is all about. So I haven't actually seen very many of these in the States, but perhaps you have plans to expand and bring more of these into the United States, which will be interesting to see. Thank you very much for the interview. Nice to meet you. Hi. Over here we have another one of my favorite um, areas at the NAMM show. This is the Meyer booth. As you can see here, they have two Steinway & Sons pianos, and while they may look brand new, they are in fact rebuilt pianos from the early 1900s. I believe this one originates from the 1930s. Not sure when the other one was originally made, but what Meyer does is they take these 
um, these old ancient pianos and bring them back to life and make them better than brand new. I will have a video of both of these instruments, and that reminds me, I think I still have to come back and film a video of that other um, M in the background. This is an L. And I'll do an in-depth review of this particular L, but I absolutely love the work that Meyer does. They retain the original soundboards and keep the beautiful characteristics of the original piano, and they just do fantastic, fantastic work. There is um, some plans, perhaps, in the future to do some more work in the future with Meyer, which I'm very excited about. Thank you very much. Here's another piano maker that I hope to do some more stuff with in the future. This is Steingraber. Now, Steingraber is a very small piano maker. They are uh, from Beirut, Germany, and they only make 60 grands and 60 uprights a year. But as you can see, they're very popular. People really enjoy playing them, and they make a very, very fine instrument. Over here is one of my favorite things at the Steingraber booth. Thank you, guys. This instrument is their 130 model upright. It is absolutely fantastic. I will have a review coming out in the future, and I think it's one of the it, probably the world's best upright piano that I have found. This is their 130 model. They make one that's eight centimeters taller, and it's absolutely fantastic to play. Like I said, I'll give you guys more information about it. I will do a full in-depth review of it here at the NAMM show. I absolutely love this piano. Steingraber also has what looks like a seven-footer um, piano over here. And let's move on to some other booths. Here we have a, uh, a vendor called Hui Tang Musical Instrument. Looks like they do piano benches and lights and uh, things of that nature. They also have some, um, some cups to put under the wheels of your piano, which is always a good thing to have. Over here we have another stencil brand. This is Schumann. Um, don't really know much about the name, but of course I do know Robert Schumann was a, um, well, Schumann was a very famous classical composer. I assume that's where they took the name from. They have a quote up on the wall that says, to send light into the darkness of men's heart, such is the duty of the artist, and it's quoted by being from Robert Schumann. So this is a stencil brand, of course, from Asia. It says Nanjing Schumann Piano, so I'm assuming China. The pianos do look quite attractive as far as the build, the build quality. I really can't say. I know very, very little about the Schumann brand. Over here we have a another instrument maker from China, I assume, Jinjiang. I can't pronounce that, but this is the this is the name. I don't even know how to pronounce this either, but this is another one of the many things you will find here at the NAMM show. These guys specialize in making digital pianos. Most certainly geared towards a beginning intermediate instrument uh, pianist. It almost feels like, does it have a graded hammer action? I think it has a graded hammer action, which I'm kind of surprised at because the bass end feels a little bit heavier uh, than the treble. So that's kind of interesting to see that in what I assume to be a relatively entry-level instrument. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I've never seen this brand before. They're not very popular here in the States from what I know, but another one of the many things you will see here at the NAMM show. Over here we have the Walter Piano Transport booth. I think, have I done a video about moving pianos? I think I have. If I have, um, these guys actually have, so I've, I've worked with these fellows uh, in the past before. Over here we have, what is this booth? JD Grant Piano Supply, hello. So it looks like this is a piano supply company. I actually haven't even seen this section of the area yet. It looks like you do um, piano parts, strings, and all kinds of stuff. So these guys specialize in bass strings, and uh, as you can see here, I should have known because they have bass strings. So you specialize in bass strings. Do you do any other type of piano parts? We have our own line of pianos. We're located in Canada. Oh, cool. And so in Canada, we have our own line of pianos, J.D. Grant, mm -hmm. that we've uh, just launched over the last year. Cool, cool. So that's in its infant stages, but... Very nice. Very awesome. Maybe perhaps someday those will be at the NAMM show. Exactly. and yeah. Cool, cool. I'll definitely check those out next time I'm here, when they're, when they're here too. So this is J.D. Grant. They make pianos, uh, pianos in Canada, and also they uh, specialize in making bass strings. So that's really cool. I just learned about a new bass string maker. Thank you very much. Over we have North Point Commercial Finance for some reason, I guess because people would want to finance pianos. Oh, hello. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I guess people would want to finance pianos here and... Um, 
that's why these guys were here at one point. I would like to give a massive thank you, by the way, to all of my subscribers and followers who have come up to me at the NAMM show, just like that kind fellow did, and introduced themselves. I've met so many great people, and I would love to thank all of you guys who have come up to me and said hi. It's been wonderful meeting so many of my subscribers and followers and people who have watched my videos. It's been absolutely great to meet you all, and I thank you so very much. This is where Renner was situated earlier at the NAMM show. They had another one of those three key action demos. Perhaps it was the same one that's now sitting at the Piano Technicians Guild booth. But Renner, of course, is a very fine maker of piano actions. You'll find their actions in virtually every piano that money can buy, especially on the high end. You've got uh, you've got Fatzil, you've got Busendorfer, you've got you know Steingraber, you've got C. Beckstein. All of these great piano makers. I, uh, uh, did I mention Busendorfer? They make they use Renner actions as well. All of these great piano makers will use Renner Actions, and that, of course, is why they're here at the booth, but they're not here on Sunday. Over here, we have the extremely famous Baldwin brand. Baldwin once was a great American manufacturer, especially in the 70s and 80s. They were making pianos that were actually competing with Steinway um, during Steinway's dark ages of the Teflon era. During that time, Baldwin was creating a heck of a piano. They're seven foot and nine foot models particularly. However, in the early 2000s, Baldwin had some, some financial difficulties and eventually was bought out by, I think it was Parsons Music, and now they are made in Asia. They're not terrible, they're not the worst Asian Chinese piano you can buy, but they're a far cry from the great legendary instruments they once were. This, act this model over here once was known as the 6000, and I actually had one of these, and I think I have a video years and years ago. The case of it was basically the same, it had these beautiful grills here that allow sound out, and the, the particular Baldwin I had of the 6000 model was rich, warm, fat sounding, and really, really lovely, And uh, but now it's called the BPX5, very, very catchy name there, and um, it's just an average Chinese piano at this point. Let's take a look on down here. The Baldwin area has a surprisingly large booth, um, which is kind of unusual. There are people who do like these, but I'm used to the old Baldwins, and those are so much better than the new Baldwins. Now, speaking of a piano maker that actually is good, Blutner certainly is one of those. This is their Model 1. It's their Constant model. And Blutner, much like Beckstein, has a couple of different lines. They've got Ermler and Heisler, which are lower-end models. I believe one of them is made in Europe and one of them is made overseas. But the Blutner line of pianos with the Blutner name on it are absolutely fantastic instruments, especially when they're voiced by Knut Blutner, who is Dr. Christian Blutner's brother. He does a fantastic job of voicing the pianos and giving them a warm, rich tone that's really, really gorgeous. The pianos here at the NAMM show this time have a bit of a brighter tone, which I would have to imagine is because the NAMM show is very noisy, and a warm, mellow piano in a noisy environment isn't going to perform as well as a bright, punchy piano. That's why they bring these pianos to the NAMM show, but I've done videos before of uh, Blutner's voice by Knut Blutner that were absolutely beautiful. The Blutner booth kind of goes on down that way, and right over there, you can probably see behind me, is the Fazioli booth. So I'm going to cut down this way here, and we will see what is in store for us down this way. Here's one of the Ermler pianos uh, designed by Blutner. Very attractive looking upright. I like the modern design. Over here we have the North American Music Incorporated. I think this is also connected with the Baldwin name over there. I'm not positive though. We've got Hallett Davis and Company, which of course used to be a um, American maker. You've got Scholz Pullman, which I believe was a European maker. And all of these now, of course, are made overseas now with the time-tested names like Hallett Davis and um, you know others. Hardman as well as another maker that they have here. So basically your average ordinary pianos, but they have fancy names. This one over here is another Hallett and Davis. Oh god, I love this. Look at this. This key is... Okay, it was just stuck up, but the key was sitting up. I used to have a Yamaha that used to do this. You could take the keys and push them up. So I wonder if this is... Like, what's this? This reminds me of childhood, because I used to have this uh, Yamaha... Entry-level Yamaha that you could take the keys and push them up like that, and they used to do that. So that's kind of funny that somebody had it sitting like that. So I'm assuming, yeah, it kind of has a bit of a gummy feel to it. I wouldn't be surprised if that's just a Chinese-designed action that they put in there. Entry-level pianos, 
I like entry-level pianos when they actually try to be good pianos, but these, I think, are just your average stencil brand pianos. You see a lot of stencil brand pianos here at the NAMM show, and here are more of them. A. Geyer. Um, when I first saw these, they were absolutely awful. They're a little bit better now. When I first found them at the NAMM show, they had, like, one of the worst bass tones I'd ever heard in a piano. This is a lot more... This is actually pretty decent for the size of piano. You probably can't hear it at all, but... It's actually pretty fat and has a good tone now, so fortunately they fixed that. It says pianos since 1877, so what these manufacturers will do is buy these old time-tested names like A. Geyer since 1877 and simply repurpose the name and make modern pianos with it. At this booth, this is by far my favorite piano. It may not be the may not be the best sounding piano, but in my opinion, it's the most fun looking. I wanted to do a video of it where I played Minecraft music on it, because the texture of it reminds me of a wood block from Minecraft, if you're familiar with that. Uh, but the NAMM environment is too noisy to really have that work, unfortunately. But I will still show it to you. I refer to this as the wood block piano. If I find one in the store, I will make that video. Now over here I find it kind of unusual. There are two instruments that are actually rebuilds. We have Schiedmeier, which is a very um, very old German maker. Today they make Celestas, not pianos, but this is an antique Schiedmeier. Very beautiful. Um, but apparently this company does rebuilds, or there's a small rebuilder from Europe that has taken this section of the booth. Um, but it's a very well done uh, rebuild as far as the aesthetics are concerned. I haven't spent much time playing it, but the appearance of this piano is absolutely beautiful. I like the big Schiedmeier logo on it. They did a very good job making this look more modern. Over here we have another interesting one, and this is why I assume this is a European rebuilder and not an American one, because as you can see it says Grotrian Steinweg. Now, in America, in the United States, you will find Grotrian pianos here and there, but they will never say Steinweg on them. There was a big issue many years ago with Steinway and Steinweg Grotrian because when the original founder of Steinway moved to America, his f last name was Steinweg, much like Grotrian Steinweg. So now modern uh, pianos you will find here in the States only will say Grotrian, but Europe in Europe, Grotrian Steinweg is still allowed to use the Steinweg part of the name. So this is a European Grotrian, which is very interesting to see that here in the United States. If we head back down here, it's all things you've already seen, the Blutner booth, and you can see the Fazioli booth right here with wonderful pictures. I like how they have a giant canvas that explains about their instruments. Really, really cool. Over here we have one of the very few American piano makers that are still left in existence. This is, of course, Mason & Hamlin. I've been a big fan of them for many, many years. Their pianos... Um, their pianos can be extremely, extremely high quality. I found some that have beautiful, warm singing tones, and they always will have wonderful looking wood. This is Makassar Ebony that they've used on this instrument, and I, it looks absolutely top notch. They brought a wider range of, um, a wide array of pianos. This one is really interesting to me. Uh, I just now noticed this. I think Mason and Hamlin may be expanding into a lower end line. Uh, come over here and check this out. This is interesting. Come here and look at this. This is really interesting. Um, first of all, let me show you what a traditional Mason and Hamlin harp looks like. This here is a traditional Mason and Hamlin harp. You can see that it has a full perimeter plate, and you can see just basically what it looks like. This is the look, the appearance of a traditional Mason and Hamlin harp, and this is, well, what they look like. It's a very traditional look for Mason and Hamlin. If you look at this harp, you can see it's a completely different design. It's not a full perimeter plate. It's a different color. It has a much more... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? I want to be polite here because I do love Mason Hamlin. It has a cheaper look to it. That's all I can really say. So Mason Hamlin appears to be expanding into more affordable, um, budget-friendly pianos. It says Artist Series down here at the corner of the fallboard instead of Made in USA like traditional Mason Hamlins will have. And instead of their usual serial number, it says MHA 188. So I do believe that Mason Hamlin is expanding into making uh, more affordable pianos in some other country, which I didn't even know about, but that is interesting news. So they brought their USA-made piano, their Artist Series piano, and they also have the Mason Hamlin CC, which is being played right here. It's their concert grand model. It's the world's heaviest piano that is being currently made, certainly right now. 
at least one of them. There are a few, like the 10-foot Fazioli and the 10-foot Borgato that might be a bit heavier, but Mason and Hamlin CCs are very beefy pianos indeed, and sitting right next to it is the wonderful Mason and Hamlin as well. Mason and Hamlin double Bs can have a gorgeous, warm, rich sound. Unfortunately, the two that they have here at the show are a bit brighter, again, much like you'd have at Blutner. They decided to bring a brighter voiced piano so that it competes better here at the, at the show, but the warm, rich Mason and Hamlin tone is really something to listen to when you find a well-prepped one. That, again, is the traditional Mason and Hamlin harp. You can see that the plate goes around the entire full perimeter, and it just has that characteristic Mason and Hamlin look that their artist series piano does not. Over here we have, I think we've covered just about everything that is here at the booth. This here is Dynatone. They're just a, uh, you know, the digital piano maker. Really nothing special. Uh, whenever people tend to play these, they play them as loud as possible, so it can get really loud in here. Um, but they're just, uh, they're here every year. You'll see these around. I never see them in stores or used online, so I don't know what the scoop is with that. Uh, the action here is very light and not amazing, but it does have the cute piano-like appearance. And they have a wide selection of Dynatone instruments. They apparently are connected with Broadman, or Broadman is sharing the booth with them. Broadman is another... It's kind of a stencil brand. The Broadman once was an ancient um, European maker, but now those pianos, again, are being made in China. However, they're another one of these stencil brands that isn't really all that bad. I have played a couple of them before, and some of them come with the Millennium 3 Action, which is the same action you can find in the top-level Kawais, so that is kind of nice as well. However, I think we've covered just about everything that is here at the... Um, Lounge 88, I believe. Uh, we're back here at C. Beckstein. Look at that beautiful, beautiful upright. I love the wood they've used on it. This is a C. Beckstein upright as well. Not sure if it's from the Academy series or the Concert series. Oddly enough, there is no soft-closed lid. This is the first piano from 2020 I've seen without a soft-closed lid. Very interesting, but it's made of this gorgeous, gorgeous wood. In the background here, we have three people playing the same piano, so this might be kind of loud, but here is a close-up look at the Mason & Hamlin's new entry line of pianos. For as long as I can remember, Mason & Hamlin only made one line of pianos, but here we can see the inside of one of their instruments that is made in China, and there appear to be two new lines. There's the Classic Series and the Artist Series as well. So this is the Classic Series, and the other one I was looking at was the Artist Series. So you can see here that the harp design and the harp color is much different from what you would normally see in Mason & Hamlin. And one of the biggest things is not only the color, but also this Mason and Hamlin badge. Normally there's a big arcing logo that says Mason and Hamlin Boston. But as you can see now, it just has Mason and Hamlin, their eagle insignia, and it just says Boston established 1854. Not saying made in Boston, just saying Boston. A lot of times like what you may see on a stencil brand piano, however, this is licensed by Mason and Hamlin. So it is kind of interesting that Mason and Hamlin is getting into making a more budget-friendly piano. For as long as I can remember, Mason and Hamlin only made one line of pianos, and that was their American-built pianos built in Haverhill. But now they're getting into making more affordable pianos in China, which is interesting. Down here on the second level of the Anaheim Convention Center, there are a number of different piano manufacturers who prefer to be down here for some strange reason. Could be because there's not enough room up at the third level or because they simply want to remain separate. And one of those here, in fact, is Steinway, as you can see. Behind me, Steinway here has one piano at their booth, and that is the Black Diamond piano. I believe there is some connection with Lang Lang on the piano. As you can see, it says Lang Lang Black Diamond. I'm not sure exactly if he like plays each one before it leaves the factory or something, but it is actually quite attractive. I do actually like the appearance of it. Um, but as you can see here, one major thing that separates Steinway from every other maker here at NAM, especially this year, is that no one is in fact allowed to play this Black Diamond piano. Last year they had a Spirio D, and I believe this one is also outfitted with the Spirio technology. So from time to time throughout the day you will hear the Spirio technology playing the piano, but no human is allowed to go b in the back and test out the piano, which I find is a very unusual business decision for Steinway, because how is somebody supposed to make a positive opinion about this brand without being able to play and experience it for themselves, rather than standing back and looking? Now I realize 
realize that the Black Diamond is a expensive limited edition piano, so I'd get if they had that at their booth for display and another piano people could play. But last year they had a regular Steinway Spirio D. This is when the Spirio technology first came out, and um, they wouldn't let anyone play that either. The Spirio system did it and wasn't doing a very good job. So I find that kind of interesting that that's Steinway's decision, but nevertheless, that is what they decided to do. Something else peculiar about where Steinway is located is they're in fact located just feet away, or meters for those of you from Europe, who are, um, you know, their Steinway is right next to Pearl River, which is a really interesting decision because, of course, Steinway is known all over the world for being a high-quality premier piano, and Pearl River, well, let's just say, is not known for being a premier world-class piano. So I find that a very interesting decision as well. You'd think that Simon would want to be next to Shigeru Kawai or someone who is more well-known for being a quality piano. But regardless, that is where Steinway is sitting. Now, having said that, there is actually one particular piano that this gentleman just has seated down at um, that is, in fact, a world-class piano here at the Pearl River booth. This here is the Ritz Mueller Concert Grand at the Pearl River booth, and it is surprisingly impressively good. I will have a review coming out of it, perhaps already posted or perhaps upcoming. This is not the type of piano and the sound of a piano you would expect to come from China. It almost has an American sounding bass and a European sounding treble. It uses a, an authentic Renner action with a wonderful feel, and it's just impressively, impressively good. So that's honestly very interesting. You can take a look here at some of the other instruments they have here. Pearl River also apparently makes digitals. I don't know if they always have or if this is new for 2020, but they do in fact have uh, digitals. We've got people filming here, so I think I'm going to go the other way around. As you can hear, that concert grand has a really nice sounding bass. Here we have Kaiserberg pianos. A few people have asked me to, uh, to demo them in the past. They are, I believe, just a a standard um, piano made by a Pearl River. Here we have another Rittmuller. This one here is a seven foot piano and I haven't actually played this one yet. Maybe I'll take a few minutes later to test it out, but if it's anything anywhere near as good as the Concert Grand, it is also a very fine piano. Although again, I haven't played it yet. Here's an interesting piano that I've never seen a piano in this color before. It's blue and uh, I've never seen a piano in this blue color. It's a very nice color. Um, not what I'd expect for pianos, perhaps what I'd expect more from like a vehicle, like a car, but still it is a very cool blue color and I do like it. Let me know if you'd want a piano like this in your home. It's not the traditional choice, but still I think it's kind of cool. Let's head over here. We've got a Rittmuller upright, more Rittmuller pianos. Don't know why that one has a different logo. Um, but it has a slightly different logo than some of the other Rittmullers. Perhaps it's a lower line of Rittmuller. Not sure. More Rittmullers. Now, what's interesting about some of these, one of the people at the booth was um, telling me about this, is that some of these pianos, I believe these two for sure, are actually a new design for Rittmuller this year. They are actually taking the entire inside of the piano and tilting it towards the player by three degrees. So this allows the action to return back to its resting position faster and allows for a more crisp action. And I do actually feel a bit of a difference. They do have a very responsive feel here on the action. The sound of it is actually also pretty good for what you would expect from a Chinese upright. The bass end is always the weakest end of an upright, and it sounds pretty dang good on this piano. This is, I believe, the tallest upright that Rittmuller makes. Uh, let's see what's going on over here. Here we have a really interesting color scheme of a piano. We've got a bright Ferrari red outside with a silvery inside. Um, reminds me of something from childhood, but I can't think of what. If I was like eight, I would want this piano so bad. Um, and perhaps that's kind of what it's designed for. It's designed to attract the attention of children and get them interested in the piano. I kind of like the color scheme. I wouldn't personally want it in my personal home, but I do actually kind of like the red color of this piano. It is a Pearl River brand piano. Surprisingly crisp, crisp sound. Kind of the traditional Pearl River action. Not bad, but not great either. Uh, but the red of it is a very nice color. Going back this way, we have more Pearl River pianos. These are Pearl River uprights. This one being played here is a Kaiserberg Grand. Here's back to the blue Pearl River. 
And on the way out, we get to have another look here at the wonderful Rittmuller concert grant. I'm going to actually take a minute here. It's a very quiet time in the room, and I'm going to take a minute. I do not have the piano mic'd up, but I will let you guys know what the sound of this piano is like. Ooh, it's got a nice light action. Lighter lighter than the uh, Rittmuller concert grand. This is really nice. They put a lot of time into making this piano feel good, and it feels really wonderful. Unfortunately, right down before I decided to do that demo, there was a lady at the Concert Grand, and so she wasn't able to hear the piano, so I'm sorry about that. But this piano has a massive amount of power. I think I might come back and do a proper review of this. has a massive amount of power, really great action, and an excellent sound in the bass as well. Um, really, actually, very, very impressive work, once again, from Rittmuller. So my initial thoughts were true about this one, that it is, in fact, every little bit as good as the Rittmuller Concert Grand. Excellent work, Rittmuller. Really great job. Let's head out now of the Pearl River booth. I do also want to say that the folks here at Pearl River were very, very kind to me. Yesterday I came in and played their pianos, and they were very, very nice and friendly, so that's also a bonus for Pearl River. But let's exit their booth now and head down here. We have more pianos of an interesting, interesting color. Check this out. These are actually from Zeiler, and uh, Zeiler is, in fact, a German company and, um, yeah, German company, and they have these blue pianos. Now, again, they're doing something rather similar to what Steinway was doing, and they have some instruments that are not available to be played, but it appears that these are actually special pianos that Zeiler is producing for supporting autism awareness, and they are this special color because of that. It's a really nice blue. I really enjoy the color. However, unlike Steinway, while Zeiler has two special limited edition pianos that people are not allowed to play, and in fact they are sold, there is an entire room of Zeiler pianos that you are welcome to come in and play. I actually have not been in here yet so far at the Zeiler booth, so this is my first time coming in here at uh, this NAMM show. So let's explore it together, shall we? What is the story with this? This is interesting. It's a piano that has like a cubby hole. I can put my whole arm inside of the piano, which would be a great place to store your sheet music. Is that what it's designed for? Possibly. There's even a cutout at the back that says Xyler, so maybe it lights up too, which is kind of cool. But if this is designed for storing your sheet music, that's a really cool idea. This is actually a German-made Xyler. Um, it also, what is interesting is it has like a, a different type of a finish, like a more of a rough finish than you would often find in a um, traditional piano. Look at that. That is unique. That is really cool, too. So that's a very special, interesting piano. If we take a look, there's nothing on the other side here, but we do have more Xylers with interesting designs. Look at this. This one here reminds me of the Schiedmeier Celestas that have handles on the side for you to be able to easily move them around. And, in fact, this one has big wheels, so I think that's exactly, in fact, look at this. It is an institutional piano. So this one's designed to be for schools. So it has these big handles to allow people to easily move them around, and in fact, as you can see, it's not difficult at all for me to move this piano just a little bit. So these handles and the large casters make it easy to move around, which would be great for an institution. This lid is heavy. Is there something holding it down? No, it's just heavy. That is... Oh, it's got these hinges that kind of friction fit it into place. I see. That's why it's heavy. It's got keys like a car on the inside. That's kind of cool. Don't know what those do. I guess lock the piano, but never seen keys that look like a car key fob. And over here we have another special one too. It's in a blue reminiscent of that Pearl River we saw earlier, but it has a much a more modern design. This is another German Zeiler. 
traditional German sound up here with that bright, wow, icy, icy sparkly treble. And has this nice blue. Interesting that so many of these Xylers have a sold tag on them. Let's head over here and see what else is going on. We've got more Xyler uprights, nice tall ones. Johannes Xyler is a lower line of Xylers that is actually made by Samic, but they're actually pretty respectable pianos, and I think I've either already released or have one in the works of a Xyler. Johannes Xyler I found at DC Pianos. Really interesting wood here. Looks like, you know, thousands of eyeballs looking out at you from the piano. I'm not sure what this is. Um, but it looks really, really unique. If I had to guess, the pattern of it reminds me of, like, choya? Choya wood? This type of cactus? But I didn't know people could possibly make veneers out of it, so I do not think that's what it actually is. Here we have more German Xylers. This one here is like a, it's a 186, so 186 centimeters long. Again, I don't have the piano mic'd up, but... Ooh, that's actually really nice. Bit of a muddy tone in the bass, but it's very warm. Very warm and a surprisingly, a surprisingly muted sounding treble. A lot of the time with these German makers, they have a very bright, sparkly treble. Very hard hammers, but they're using softer hammers here. So it has a bit of a more mellow sound, which many people may prefer. But the sound in here is so rich and glorious. Actually very pleasant to listen to. Very, very nice. I like that. Let's move on over here. I heard rumors there was a Xyler concert grand. A few years back, I actually got in trouble for playing one of the Xyler concert grands when I wasn't supposed to. They were doing meetings in the room, and I didn't know it. So hopefully there's not too many meetings going on. I will try to play quiet, though. I won't play speeches again. Xyler seems to have a very, very soft, very gentle sound compared to the other German manu- Again, this one has that soft hammer kind of a treble sound. Let me see if I can get this mic in closer. You can hear it. It's a lot more softer, especially when you're here at the piano, a lot more softer and more muted sounding than a lot of the other German manufacturers. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but that is what Zeller has decided to do here with these pianos. Bit of a different approach than you normally see from Europe. Now, there does appear to be a meeting going on over here, so I will be cautious on the concert grand, but here we have the Zeller concert grand. They're using a really interesting wood on the inside there, and it's actually quite pretty. Let's take let's see how this sounds. Again, it has that nice rich warm sound, very light action. Kind of reminds me of the one that was on the con the semi concert grand in the next booth over, very light feeling action. Presumably a Renner as well. It's being used in here. Nice deep sounding bass and again, it has a bit more sparkle than the other two Zylers we've looked at already in the last octave, but the treble up here is a lot more muted than you'd find in a Steingraber or a uh, Beckstein. Here are some brands that I didn't actually know were associated with Xyler. As you can see, we have Kanabe here on this piano. Kanabe once was a great American manufacturer that many people have said very good things about Kanabe's Concert Grand. These days, Kanabe is simply a stencil brand that I believe is also made by Samic. The highest-end Kanabe's that are made today actually, once again, a bit like these Zo Johanna Xylers, are actually pretty respectable. Um, here we have a few of these Kanabe. Uh, pianos that I don't see the upper, upper end of Kanabi, um, but I found one at, again, at DC Pianos, and it was actually pretty good. It had a nice warm sound, a little bit reminiscent of the sound I found here at the uh, Xyler booth on the Xylers. Here is another Xyler in a kind of uh, antique, like almost maybe a French kind of a style. I don't know, kind of like it's reminiscent of a piano from the early 1900s. Again, in white. Xyler seems to have a really fat bass tone. Let's see if the treble is kind of m mellow. No. Not on this one. This is more like what I expect from a German manufacturer. Lot Excuse me. It, the treble on this piano is brighter and more sparkly than the Xylers that I was finding earlier, which is a bit more of what I expect from a German manufacturer. Here we have more Xylers and Johannes Xylers. I'm really amazed at how many pianos Xyler brought to the NAM show. This must be why they want to be on the second level because this is a this would be a major massive part of the Lounge 88. So Xyler must be down here because they are bringing a massive amount of pianos to the show and don't want to take up a huge amount of space. Here's an interesting like space gray. Oh my goodness. 
look who bought this piano. DC Pianos bought this instrument, so if I'm there when this is at their store, I will do a video of it. That is amazing. I was just talking about them a second ago, and um, they are in fact a Xyler dealer, so they will have this instrument at their store at some point. It's a really interesting modern design with the gray, and it looks like it's also got some technology in it as well. Perhaps it's a player or a silent system piano, but DC Pianos bought that. Isn't that cool? That's really awesome. The piano that you s that you see behind me is a Shigeru Kawai SK6, which is from Ka which is from Kawai's highest highest line, Shigeru Kawai. This is a roughly about seven foot piano, and it is quite nice. In fact, it has a Millennium Three carbon fiber action, and it has been hand built in Japan by Kawai's finest craftsmen. It is a very good piano, has a nice mellow sound, but while it is quite good. I did mention in my review of it, my in-depth review, that I really liked the action. However, shortly afterwards, I went and played at the Fazioli booth, and I found that the Shigeru Kawai really didn't compare to the action of the Fazioli. However, it's still pretty good. In that review, I also had a bit of an encounter with Bigfoot as well, so if you haven't seen that video, you might want to check that out. It's quite fun. Here is the Shigeru Kawai booth here at the 2020 NAM show. You can see that it, again, is very large, very spacious, and contains a large number of pianos. As you can see here, there's a massive open area in the middle here, and we've got some kawaii's here on the end. It's very quiet. This is another reason why some makers like to be on a second floor, because less people tend to go here. It's kind of a, kind of a give or take situation, because on one hand, less people will come here, so the people who do come here can hear the pianos better, but at the same time, they don't get as much exposure as they would be if they were up at the Lounge 88. If I were a maker and I were coming to NAMM, I'd almost want to have like one piano of mine on the Lounge 88 with a message on it saying, find more of our pianos on level two. That might be a kind of a cool idea, but it is very expensive to rent booths here at the NAMM show, so that is most certainly why. This is from Kawaii's kind of like, I believe it's sort of like their second line of pianos. It's their black series. This is the GX2. It contains the same Millennium 3 action that you would find in a Shigeru Kawaii, and it in fact feels very nice. Right here we have the Shigeru Kawaii SKEX, which is Shigeru Kawaii's largest and finest piano. I have somebody here who is playing the piano next to it so that I, so I don't annoy him. I will not play this piano right now and come back to it in a little bit, but this is in fact Shigeru Kawaii's largest and best sounding piano. The piano that this guy here is playing is an SK3, which is a smaller size of the Shigeru Kawai line, and it is also handcrafted in Japan. You can see this really, really lovely um, red wood that they have used here on the piano. Very, very beautiful, and it is a very nice touch. I'll put that back, let this guy enjoy the piano, and we will move on to other places. One of Kawai's recent releases is the Novus NV5, which is a hybrid piano. What makes this different from an acoustic piano is that while it has the action of an acoustic piano, it's actually completely digital. The sounds that it produces are digital, but it uses the action, the modified action. As you can see, those are not your normal hammers, but it uses a modified action from an acoustic piano to give it a good feel. It, this one, the NV5, comes in a vertical uh, piano kind of a format with a vertical piano action, and it has a pretty good feel indeed. What's kind of cool is I believe for extra cost, you can actually order one with this clear plexiglass, and if you want the lights, apparently a set of strip LEDs from Home Depot will do the trick. They have a set of headphones here that you can test it out with. These were where they were sitting originally, but you can also it also has speakers, of course, uh, probably in the bottom and certainly up in the top here that you can use to listen to the instrument acoustically. This is the NV10. I actually did a review of one of these a while back, and you can see somebody here is testing one of these out with a set of headphones. This is the NV10. This one uses a grand piano style action. I believe it's a modified Millennium 3, whereas the NV5 uses a vertical piano action and I believe is a little bit more affordable. We have a, an arrangement of Kawaii digital pianos over here. This is the action that's used in the gra oh, the Grand Feel 3. Oh, wow. So they've come out with a new uh, iteration of the Grand Feel action. Uh, the MP11, the original MP11, the one I have, uses the old M the old Grand Feel action. Then they came out with the Grand Feel 2, which from my experience I didn't like quite as much as the old one. And now they have the Grand Feel 2, which what I can see from this demo this feels very, very nice. Um, I would imagine that this keyboard that is we're, that we're sitting right next to, the CA99, 
in fact uses the grand three wooden key keyboard actions. You can see the keys are in fact made of wood like you'd find in a real piano. They've got bushings like you would find in a real piano, but a much more complex action that Kawhi has designed to feel as much like an acoustic piano as possible. I'm going to take a moment and actually play the CN99. You guys won't be able to hear it at all because I've got headphones here, but I'll put on the headphones up. You know what I think of the sound, and I will also let you know what I think of the action. Ooh, that's loud. Can I turn that down? Yeah, here we go. Turn that down. This, I think, might be a little bit lighter than the original, um, the original Grand Feel. Has a bit of a lighter, looser kind of a feeling to it. Still very good. Definitely very good. I'm not sure which one I'd like more, the Grand Feel 3 or the Grand Feel. I do think this is a little bit lighter than the original Grand Feel. I'll say that again. playing some Beethoven here so we can test out how well it does and it's actually doing a pretty good job here of keeping up to the song or to the piece excuse me gives good dynamic control very crisp very fast now to be honest with you I don't see a massive improvement over the original Grand Feel with the Grand Feel 3 but I also don't see a radical decrease in performance either, so I do think that the Grand Feel 3 is pretty nice. I kind of felt that the Grand Feel 2 was a little bit bouncy uh, compared to the original Grand Feel, but this doesn't seem to have that bouncy feel at all, and I think it has a pretty nice feel, in fact. Over here we have more digital pianos, the CN39, and here we have a couple of people trying out the MP11 SE and also the MP7 SE. I haven't actually played on the MP7 SE, but we do have the MP11 and the MP7, which is pretty cool. We've got some more, um, some more digitals, and I'm curious why this is here. It's locked. It's like an old Kawaii upright, maybe from the 90s. It's even got like scrapes and everything, so you can see this is a used piano. Not sure why this is here. Maybe they were doing a demo of their older equipment and showing why their newer equipment is better. But this is this has been a little walk around of the Kawaii booth. And now we've got people standing right next to the SKEX, so I don't think I will play it still. Um, but maybe I'll go touch a little bit on the SK3 just real quick, just to see how it feels. I remember my first NAMM show I ever went to, Shigeru Kawai, had a SK3 um, that looked exactly like this one. Actually a very good sound. Very good sound, very good feel, very nice, and of course very pretty. I've always found that the smaller models of the SK line tend to not be as consistent as the SK7 and the SKEX, but this one actually seems to be a particularly good model. If it is in fact the same one that was at the 2016 NAMM show, that's why, because it's really good. Now let's head out of the Shigeru Kawai booth and head back out into the main hallway and I think that that will be a wrap up for this video. Actually, you know what? No, it's not because we have Shimmel. Like I mentioned earlier with Kawai, one disadvantage of being on the second floor is it can be hard to find your booth. After Shigeru Kawai, I thought it was all done with the pianos on the second floor, but then I realized that Shimmel has this giant sign at the end of the hallway and their booth is right this way. Much like with Xyler, I have not actually explored this booth at all yet, so it's going to be a completely new experience for me. I did a review of one of these many years ago. I found it in, I think it was Arizona somewhere, and uh, it has this beautiful wooden design. It says sold on it, presumably do not play is what that is indicating, so I will not. Also, there's someone else enjoying a Schimmel piano just over there, but that is the Schimmel piano. Very, very pretty. We have Wilhelm Schimmel, so many sold pianos, again like Xyler, so many sold pianos. This one is sold, those two are sold, this one here is sold, this one here is sold. So Schimmel is selling like hotcakes, as they say, here at the 2020 NAMM show. Oh, if I can find one that doesn't say sold on it, I will give it a demo. Because um, I assume the sold signs are either, here we go, the sold signs are either bragging that we're selling a lot of pianos or saying this one's sold, please don't touch it. But this one, if it is sold, there's no sticker on it. So let me give this a quick little demo. This is, what model is this? 375331, I think that's the serial number. K219. 
This is a Shimmel K219. Wow. Surprisingly heavy action here, and also an extremely stiff damper pedal. Um, really, really springy on the damper pedal, and a surprisingly heavy action as well. Nice, a, a Xyler esque sound with that kind of muted treble. And a pretty average sounding bass for the mid range of this piano. So I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this video of taking a tour of the NAMM show and showing off all of the piano related things that I could find here at the show. The only thing missing in this video is the pianos at the Yamaha booth, which is actually in the Marriott Hotel next door. I will have multiple videos, many videos in fact, of Yamaha products. I think I'm going to have like two different varieties of a tour video at the Yamaha booth. At least that's what I filmed here uh, at the NAMM show. So I'll have lots of cool stuff about Yamaha as well in the future, but I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video of all the piano related stuff. I've wanted to do a video like this for years, but just never really had the time. But this time is the first time I've spent all four days here at the NAMM show. Things are quieter on Sunday, so I thought it would be a good idea to go through and show you all the different piano makers that come to the NAMM show. It, it depends year to year. Sometimes you get more makers, sometimes you get less makers who come to the show. This year was actually pretty slim, but still there were quite a few different people who came to the show. Perhaps next year we'll be more busy. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to go ahead and check my channel out if you're new. I have lots of cool videos of pianos, organs, keyboards, digital pianos, and all sorts of other cool musical stuff. So if any of that sounds cool and you're not already subscribed, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do, well, thank you very much, and I will see you in the next video, and maybe at the 2021 NAMM Show. Thank you very much. See you then.